Did you hear that noodle the pug died? You mean pasta the pug. What? Because all pasta is noodles? He's dead, you monster. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Scherer. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiety. And we are internet chefs over on the Good Mythical Morning and Mythical Kitchen channels. When we're not making Oreo Top Ramen, we're breaking down the world's biggest food debates right over here. Wow, that was good. Thank you. I like I, the way you said that. I've tried to stop looking at the script that we wrote so much. Uh, nothing in this is scripted. I love Boy, looking at my computer. If it was scripted, this my podcast computer. would be so much better. Oh my God. I can't, no, all the factual wouldn't. inaccuracies would Are be cleaned you sure? up. You know, people wouldn't be like, oh, Trader Joe's isn't owned by Aldi. It's owned by Aldi Nord, which split up with the two brothers that owned Aldi. And I'm like, listen, and Aldi's Wow, Aldi. really? That's not the point, Nicole. Sorry, Today, I'm putting on some, some lip gloss. I'm listening. Would you just putting on lip gloss in the middle of a podcast? Yeah, it's a video podcast. I want them to see my lips be nice and shiny. But do you, are you sponsored by this lip gloss company? No. It'd be nice if None I None of that's important. What is important is that Noodles the Pug is dead. Yes. He was our Oracle Pug. The owner would yeah. lift him up and it would either be a Bones Day or a No that's Bones right. Day. Okay. And that's how. I made millions on the stock market. If it was a Bones Day, I'd go bear. If it was no Bones Day, I'd, I'd go play bull. bull. Yeah, I don't know what any of that I means. Mean, I do. Uh, I know the difference between a bull and bear. Do you? No, I actually don't. Oh, I do. But I'm not going to explain on the podcast because the main point of this podcast is asking... Are all noodles pasta? And this is a great question. This gets really deep and nerdy, which I'm really excited about because this actually came up. We produced an episode for Good Mythical Morning. We did? Called International Noodle Taste Test. Okay. This was before my time, I believe. Uh, this, was this? Oh, shoot. Was this, this was before, before your time? my time, but I'd love to hear the answer. Yeah, because I vaguely remember keeping like five saute pans going by myself <laughs> at one time and like having to flip them around. Okay. We did International Noodle Taste Test. We were initially going to call it International Pasta Taste Test, but then oh. I stepped in and was like, hey, pasta is... To me, strictly referring to the Italian mm -hmm. canon of noodles, whereas if you say noodle, that can encompass all forms of pasta. Sure. Tons of things from Asia, from, you know, the Middle East. Uh, there's dishes in, in Africa. We did a uh, jollof, spaghetti jollof recipe, or maybe it's just jollof pasta from, from Nigeria. But we included things like penne noodles in there because I would okay. call penne a noodle. And then we got a ton of comments that were like, penne is not a noodle. Noodles have to be long and strandy. Oh. And then you got people from uh, Italy in the comments being like, no, that isn't even pasta. That's macaroni. Oh. Yada, yada. So it opened up this huge can of worms. And this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Okay. And then we had to wait for like 130 of our better ideas <laughs> this for podcasts. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But yeah, I mean, when, when somebody says noodle versus pasta, what do you think of? I have a very vivid image in my mind. What's it? It is a dry bag, not a box, but a bag of yellow egg noodles. <laughs> that's what you think of with noodle. It is. It is the first thing that comes to my mind. That, to me, that's a very Jewy food that I grew is up it? eating a lot. Like, like we had noodle <laughs> kugel, right? Not me, but you. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, it's a very like Ashkenazi, very yeah. white Eastern European Jewish thing. We would take these egg noodles and one, you can put them in soup. In I soup. had them in chicken noodle soup a lot growing up. I had it in like, you know, mishmash soup. Nope. It's chicken noodle soup with matzo balls. Sometimes, called, is that like a, like a real name? Does that have kreplach in it? Yeah, sometimes there's kreplach okay, in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's like you go to a Vietnamese restaurant. They have like dak biet, which is just which the just house. means like the yeah. house special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that's like you go to a deli, you get the mishmash. Oh, cool! It'll I be never heard that It'll before. be yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I think I think of noodles with that because my first um exposure to noodles is probably chicken noodle soup. Okay. So that's what it's in a can of Progresso Campbell's chunky. Okay. You get those egg noodles. Mm -hmm. But then you go to any Korean restaurant, Vietnamese restaurant, yeah. Chinese restaurant there's generally a section for noodles which is separate from the soup which is sometimes well sometimes there's a noodle section there's a noodle soup section and then there's a soup section oh, yeah so i'm thinking of like your standard chinese american sit down restaurant so not a steam table not talking panda express we're mm -hmm. talking about your local neighborhood joint we can go in and their section of noodles might contain a noodle soup uh, or it could be stir fried dry noodles like chow fun sure. or lo mein. Yes. Um, and main is Cantonese for noodle, but then in Mandarin noodle is mian. Correct. Which is a trip because we think of you know chow mein as your dominant Chinese steam table noodle. Anyway, the point is really, the yeah. soups don't have any noodles in it. The soups you might have sizzling corn soup, sizzling rice soup, Love egg flour soup. soup, hot and sour soup. Uh, <laughs> None of those have nudes. None of those have nudes in them, yeah. but some of them have dumplings in it, like say. But a dumpling isn't a noodle. It's just a. It's a. It's a but then you base. go to Italy, and then their their dumplings, like ravioli tortellini, 
Right? Wasn't just you know wonton a tortellini, but no, one needs, nothing, nothing. One's made of pasta nothing. and one's made of one's made of dumpling, but not noodle. Nothing. So all nothing. noodles aren't pasta. All pastas aren't noodles. No, I mean, let me tell you, pasta <laughs> in my mind is it's like you said, it's a strictly Italian or like. European thing for me. Yeah, because it's it's it like is. an Italian word. Yeah. Right? And, and yeah. noodle is American? German. Oh, noodle. Well, old yeah, noodle. Yeah, I love my noodles. <laughs> but it was, so it's it's Central European. It's yeah. either German or Dutch. Typically okay. it'll have like a K in it. Um what's there's we, we made a German Flat dumpling super. soup. I we made like we made flatel soup, uh, which is like a German soup. But it's a, a very German word and it just means thing. Just like pasta means thing. Just like in Vietnamese, bun means thing. It means like starchy, cakey thing. Yeah, okay. So, so noodle uh, like literally means something that is made into a paste that is then sort of elongated into- Elongated. It can also mean like dumpling. So it, But it really doesn't have a defined meaning. Do you know hmm. what pasta means? Tell me. Paste. It means no paste, way. right? So it literally That's just refers sick. to making a paste That's out of awesome. out of flour, right, or out yeah. of anything, and then stretching that into a dough. Similar mm. with you know um, uh, the noodles in pho, right? It's called like bun pho. Are those vermicelli noodles? Uh, vermicelli, <laughs> another weird thing. There's this like is why this is the nerdiest thing to me. There's and like I love five it. different vermicellis when I think of vermicellis. There's sure, so, the white one, there's a yellow one, there's a cut up fideo one. It's like all over the place. Do you know what place. vermicelli means? Tell so me. Vermicelli is <laughs> Italian, of course. It sounds very Italian. Okay. And so vermicelli means little worms. And so it was, like, it was like a Southern Italian term for just a long strandy pasta. How so you awesome. go to Italy and vermicelli can sometimes mean a like thicker than spaghetti strandy pasta. Mm -hmm. But then in America, you say vermicelli and you mean a very, very thin noodle. Yes. Sometimes you go to a Vietnamese restaurant. This is the thing that trips me out so much. So in Vietnam, there are several different terms for the types of noodles, right? Just talk mm -hmm. about like bun pho mm -hmm. with the thick rice noodle that is found in pho. You get bun, as in like my favorite Vietnamese dish, bun tit nung sai yo. The like thin, everybody knows what that thin, is. <laughs> thin rice noodles with, <laughs> with bone-in grilled pork Yum. and delicious shrimpy egg rolls. But you get that. You go to a Vietnamese restaurant. There's a section on the menu that might say noodles, okay. and then one of the subsections of noodle is vermicelli. So you go to a Vietnamese restaurant. There's a section that is named after a German word, noodle, and then there's an Italian subset of a type of noodle called vermicelli. <laughs> and Germany and Italy have nothing to do. With even like the colonial history of Vietnam. I'm just letting you cook right now. This is fascinating. I'm letting me. It's you fascinating. Cook. I'm letting you exert out all your energy <laughs> Thank you. until you're ready to debate. I'm like a dog that you have it's to fine. let run around I, in the yard. Listen, I've known you for what? start pooping in the grass. Three, four years. I've yeah. known you long enough to when you find something you find yourself very interested in, I just let you go. I let you go. <laughs> and whenever you're ready for the interaction, I'll give it to you. Is there anything else I need to know about pasta and noodles? Weren't you going to yeah. tell me something about Marco Polo? You're I like, was. Nicole, wait, I'm going to talk to you about Marco Polo. I was. I was. <laughs> so have you heard the Marco Polo myth that like that's how pasta came to Italy? Faintly. So Faintly. One of, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this in the podcast is okay. because uh, if you go over to the Smosh channel, you can watch my funeral roast. It was really good. Where they draw red meat to filth. <laughs> read me for filth, read me to filth. I think read me for filth. For filth. They all read me for filth, but a joke that Arasha <laughs> made, who one that's the funniest so funny. thing I've ever heard in my She's life. So funny. Um, but she she referenced me telling you, quote, where pasta actually comes from. And as I was laying in God. that coffin, I was like, I feel like what she's referring to is the fact that pasta, even though people think it's Italian, actually comes from China. And that comes from the Marco Polo myth that in the 1200s traveled the Silk Road, went to Kublai Khan's royal court, ended up in, I can't remember what dynasty it was in China at the time, mm -hmm. but basically like discovered that they were eating noodles in China and then brought that back to Italy. That is completely untrue. Pasta, the development of like taking starch, grinding it into flour, turning it into some form of noodle, some form of long cooking strand. Cooking it in water or cooking something. Cooking it in water. Yeah. Those both developed uh, recent archaeological history in China. They think they found a bowl of noodles made from millet. Oh, 4, cool. 4,000 years old. Cool as hell that people How did, did they that. find that? Uh, it was just on an archaeological dig and they uh, the, examined they... the seed husks around it. It was just buried under... No way. Yeah. Millet was able to stand, withstand that? Yeah, I guess it must have been preserved That's uh, wild. in whatever way. And they found the, what the does seed it do pods of it. <laughs> God, I don't know. But millet is like a really hard grain. Yeah. And that was back before China cultivated wheat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may think of rice as the dominant starch in East Asia. And for, you know, a, yeah. a majority, 
it was, but also long history of wheat noodles. So you look at the ingredients of like mian, mm-hmm. which is wheat noodle, and spaghetti, which is Giada de Laurentiis' favorite noodle, and they're damn near identical except for maybe some lye water that is used, some alkaline water sure. that's used in Chinese noodles. Yes. Um, anyways, the Greeks were also making their own type of pasta about 3,000 year, years ago. They called lagane. Interesting. So the ancient Greeks also, they were taking uh, a paste that was made from ground wheat and they were elongating it and they were boiling it. They they were making a soup out of uh, chickpeas and leeks in these boiled strips of pasta. So interesting. And that's about 3,000 years ago. Wow. And then, of course, these things just, they evolved divergently. And then eventually... They meet uh, in about like 100 AD, I believe, was the first like mm-hmm. Euro exploration into, you know, the the kingdoms of China. And then they met and they're like, oh, my God, yo, you eat noodles? We eat noodles. How do we know a German word a thousand years before it existed? I don't know. But point is, language often fails us. <laughs> <laughs> is that what, we, what we've learned from this podcast? I don't know. Kind of. <laughs> like, do you consider macaroni to be noodles? I mean, the thing is, the, uh, it's extruded, and then it gets cut, right? Yeah. It gets extruded through a dye. Yes. Now, I'm sure there's people that were out there, you know, making their own noodles, rolling it by hand, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the modern take of these noodles that are pushed through dyes, calling them noodles instead of pasta products feels wrong. You know what I mean? I like don't know calling, that it does. Calling, I don't know, a radiatore, whatever it's called. Radiatore. Radiatore. Like calling that a noodle feels wrong. But at the same time, how can I do that whenever there's like tons of noodles in like different countries that don't need to be these long, elongated strips of, of wheat or durum or whatever. And those things are considered noodles. So I'm kind of at like an impasse person from like a culinary yeah. standpoint. Like it, I don't think it's fair to call it noodles Mm. because noodles are long in my mind. When I think of a noodle, I think of something long, wide, flat, thin, whatever. Yeah. But the thought of something being extruded, like a penne being extruded, and then that being a noodle just doesn't make sense to me. So that's where my path is. You're writing a recipe for macaroni. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Nicole, something's got unlocked my brain. We're about to go down another Um, rabbit hole. I'm sorry. Did you? I can't your, control this. I don't like who I am all the time either. Did you stick a feather in your cap and did you call yourself macaroni? <laughs> well, I think that. Do you know the origin behind that? A macaroni is like a well dressed man. Right? Yeah, it was like you're yeah. like a stylish. You're a peacocking fuck. out there a as fuck. our hero, uh, mystery from <laughs> the. <laughs> yeah. ma- was is the that mascot? where it's from? <laughs> no, I think they used the term peacocking though. But oh, yeah, nice. to be to to be a macaroni back then. Yeah. That's where the song "Return of the Mac" comes from, of course. No, I don't believe that's true. Um, <laughs> I totally believe you. I was like, I love that song. No way. But no, the term macaroni mm-hmm. predates the word pasta in no Italian. Way. And so there is so macaroni comes from ancient Greek uh, makaria, which means something made from barley, which is to say How grain. How awesome. Right? And so if you talk to um, the Sopranos, if you talk to Tony, Tony Soprano, Soprano, he might call everything macaroni and gravy. Oh, well, I call everything macaroni. You and, call everything and fa- macaroni. Well, well, in Farsi, every pasta, short, long, medium, doesn't matter. It's all macaroni. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> and that comes from the south of Italy because Italian was not a, a unified language still in Italy. There are parts that you can go to mm. where people do not speak the same dialect at all. You could say... The same in America, you know, I um, you go to the deep south, you go to Cajun country, you find people that speak different dialects. Sure, but yeah. in Italy, it's a much, much, much more recent unification history. I had no idea. So there's regions where I remember talking to somebody who was like, yo, I work for, with a dude from like Lombardy and like I'm from Sicily and like we don't understand each other. That's wild to me. 100%. And so uh, macaroni is uh-huh. a southern Italian word coming from Sicily. So they use that to mean like any type of pasta. <laughs> so Somehow in America... It macaroni and cheese, popularized supposedly by Thomas Jefferson. Um, but macaroni to us means elbow noodles. Yes, it does. Elbow noodles in Italian is gomiti. 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 What does that mean? I don't even know what gomiti, gomiti. means. I know my favorite, uh, very bisexual coded Italian rock band, uh, Monaskin. Oh, yeah, they we have love a song Monaskin. called Lividi Sweet Gomiti, and I think that's their best work. Honestly, their what latest album mean? is not good. They used to make real music Il Teatro de Iro, Volume One. Great album, check it out. It's before they won Eurovision. And then it was all downhill from there. Listen, Are you going to talk about Eurovision for 14 minutes Ziti without Buani, Ziti again? Buani was a fantastic song. You know, and then all their stuff's in English now. They even had, they had uh, Tom Morello on a track recently. Oh, cool. Yeah, I it's don't cool listen until to you Monaskin listen to it. I don't much. know, Monaskin, come on I don't really show. listen to Tom Morello uh. either. 
but I do eat a lot of pasta. <laughs> okay, so but I don't eat a lot of noodles. You're you're making a uh, macaroni and cheese recipe. Yeah, would you say? What do you say when you're like, now add your blank to the cheese sauce? I say noodles. You say noodles. I do say noodles. And why do you say noodles? Why podcast, do you use any word? But this podcast has created an impasse in my mind because I just don't think, I just don't think it's fair for all noodles to be categorized as pasta. But Not pasta, all noodles are pasta. But all pasta is noodles, I all guess. Pasta is but noodles. I don't want it to be. All pasta is noodles. Well, uh oh, I don't think all pasta is noodles. Like orzo is not a noodle. Ditalini is in a noodle. Couscous is in a noodle. Do you know where the macaroni in, in Persian comes from? Nope. Yeah, it's but it's just like that's just what it's you just grew general. Up. It's just a general term. But like, it, so if you're eating penne, you're being like, macaroni? hey, that's, that's macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you tadig any macaroni? Oh yeah. Have you tadig multiple macaroni? I can tadig just about anything. <laughs> that's like the, that is the most hardcore Persian flex. I can, I can tadig. I can tadig. I'm actually really bad at making tadig, but one day I'll be so good. I think when I'm a Persian mom, I think I'll be the best tadiger in the in the nation. I just gotta wait. Do they have like a national or international Tadig championship? I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna start that stuff immediately. <laughs> How do we like? Is Twitch big in Iran or do they? I imagine I don't it's think probably so. banned. <laughs> yeah, probably banned. Um, well, my my question is, Josh, could you ever if all noodle if all noodles are pasta? No, not all noodles are pasta. Okay, well that's the title Can of the explain? podcast. Yeah, but let me explain. No, all pasta is noodles. <laughs> All pasta is noodles, and I'll explain why. The name of the podcast why. is Are All I'll Noodles why. Pasta? But now you're saying all pastas is noodles. Oh, and my answer to that title, Nicole, is no. Again, <laughs> this is the most complicated thing in the world. So not all noodles is pasta because- I agree with you. I agree with you. Pasta? Okay. No, I refer to <laughs> Noodles is- Is it when I sustain icon? <laughs> The yeah, dog Noodles the pug is a false idol. He's not Christian. Dude. He is dark magic. He's Do dark not listen sided? to him. He's dark sided. He's dark sided. I'm a god warrior. <laughs> what I was saying. Yes, Josh. Have you ever had like uh, acorn acorn starch noodles? No. Mung, mung bean noodles. Yes. Right, but I'm saying many times. The, mung bean noodles. Oh, mung bean noodles mung are great. Noodles. You have like uh, they call them in in Hawaii like wiki wiki noodles. They're oh, cool. like the glass noodles that are very thin. Never been to Hawaii. Point it. Oh, you should go. Oh my god, it's so fun. Okay. Oh, why have you never been? I just didn't have the opportunity. Are you like? Are you like? Are you like, <laughs> I, just, I, I had somebody say that to me once about Hawaii, and it was really upsetting. They said, "Are you poor?" No, they didn't. They were like, "You've never stayed at the Kauai Hilton before, or yeah. something." And I was just like, "You're my boss, and you pay me thirty grand <laughs> it's a like, year, it's and like I have say, crushing student loans." No. Yeah, it's like people say, uh, "You don't, you don't ski, you don't go skiing." <laughs> I'm know. like. Bro, what the hell? No, I do not. But where do you operate? Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Sorry, you uh, were saying. Point is, there are noodles that are made from so, so, so many things that yes. are not flour, right? Fair. And in their respective languages, they have separate names for them. And I like that. I agree with that. I agree. And I do generally agree with honoring different languages by mm -hmm. calling things by their name. Sure. However, I understand. <laughs> I only know the scene with the peach. Um However, I also understand that if you are a restaurateur in America who uh -huh. is from Korea, who is from Thailand, wherever, and you're trying to sell your goddamn food. And so you call it, you meet, you reach people sure. where they are. Yeah. Right. So we talk about, we've talked about Thai curry before, right? I was just about to say, like the noodles that are in Thai curry, the yellow one that I really like. So like, that's a hell noodle, like, you know, curry, a it like comes from Hindi or uh, one of the, the many dialects yeah. they're in, but that has been anglicized. It was actually gadi. Which again, Hindi's written out in its own characters. So how do you even anglicize that? Mm -hmm. But curry was like a British colonial Indian term that then Thailand was like, oh y'all like y'all like spicy, spicy. fragrant yeah. stewed things. Yeah. Great, we got those. They were called gayang, but like screw it. Now it's curry because we're yeah. we're trying to slang some damn curry. Out yeah, here. no, it makes right? sense. We're trying to make money. We're trying to feed our family. So. A lot of Asian restaurants have adopted the term noodle. Yeah. Again, a weird German word that is very <sighs> that is so crazy. readily understandable in English because we have so many things like that. You know, we have macaroni. We have all these Italian yeah. noodles. We have instant noodles of all varieties. Of course. And so you go to an Asian restaurant and so you go to a Vietnamese restaurant and you see noodle and you're like, well, are these thick or thin? And then one person was like, I've seen at the American grocery store, y'all sell something called vermicelli. We have boon. And so, screw Which it. Is Boone is now enough. vermicelli, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. And so you're constantly sort of, language is evolving all the time. You're constantly chasing around the changing yeah, definitions of, of to meet people where they are well, to say what is most readily identifiable. So you're trying to tell people to dump their 
uh, what is it, gomiti, right? No. You're trying to tell people to dump their gomiti into their Velveeta sauce in a recipe. No. People don't know what gomiti is. So yeah. you're going to say noodle. You're going to say macaroni noodles. You got to do what you got to do to sell the product. Exactly. You got to make people want to click and want to do it. Want and to, I think yeah. it's it's kind of cool to see these, you know, melting pots and how we end mm-hmm. up with all this cross-pollination of languages, right? And how yeah. you end up with uh, the reverse could be true. In, in Guatemala, you have like tortas de chow mein. Have you seen this? No. It was a popular Guatemalan sandwich. It's probably popular in parts of Mexico too, but I've only had it at Guatemalan spots. Okay. Where they take chow mein, became uh, popularized in the instant noodle form. Okay. You can go to like the Latin section of grocery stores Mm -hmm. in LA and you can find a chow, a pack of chow mein. But there's a like brand of chow, of packaged chow mein that is very popular in Latin America. Okay. And in Guatemala, they started stir frying up the noodles, putting it in like a bolillo, uh, and then making a torta de chow mein. And so now chow mein is spelled C H A O M E I N. Oh, fun! And so you get this like weird cross pollination. Yeah. And so you know that's not a noodle. That's mein, which is a Cantonese you, word, not Mandarin. Feel- Mandarin is mian. <laughs> Sorry. How do you feel about like the interchanging of different kinds of noodles from different countries? Oh. Like, what would you do? What would you do if we were, you know, we had to do like a, an episode and then it's like, oh, I didn't buy the right noodles. The only thing I have, like if I, I want to use like chow fun, okay? yeah, yeah. but I can't use chow fun because I didn't buy it in time. Would it be horrible? Would it be wrong if I just put some capellini in there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Would, would it like, like if all, if all noodles are, if all pasta is noodles and if all noodles are pasta, like why can't you interchange it? Oh, you can. And you I'm can. and I'm you 100% really think, for that. Do you really feel that way? But yes. what about different sizes of noodles, like putting penne? <laughs> there, okay, there are so many. So like bun pho like yeah. refers to the actual like cut of the noodle, mm-hmm. right? It refers to the thickness of very specific kind. There are so many pho spots you'll go to that, and again, these are owned by Vietnamese people. And I hope I'm not just misrepresenting this, but this is what I've been told. Um, so many Vietnamese restaurants that will just put different kinds of noodles in their food. They're still made of rice. And most people mm-hmm. don't know the difference. They don't Is it care. the thickness and thinness that just varies? Yeah. So sometimes oh. there will be like the noodles that would be in boon, the vermicelli. Yeah. You know, instead of the slightly thicker like bun pho. Sure. Um, and that's whatever. I like I it doesn't please me as much. Uh, you know, I don't love it as much. But also, again, it's like you're trying to get as close as you can with the stuff that you got. Yeah. Um, there is a really famous article from the really famous in my circles. Oberlin College, you know Oberlin College? Never heard of that college before in my life. I think What's Oberlin College? Lena Dunham went there. It's kind of known as like oh. the when conservatives talk about like, you know, cultural Marxism, they're talking about Oberlin College. Um it, it's gotten this stereotype. Uh-huh. There was once a uh, an article that was written about how at their dining hall um, they had like a bun mi or something and it had like American pulled pork and the bread wasn't right. And bun mi actually means baguette and mm-hmm. they didn't use that. And all this, um, and it was a person talking about how that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> okay. It might be true, and it's not my place to really say. Okay. The thing that I will say is, you're not talking about somebody making, like, a massive profit. Uh, you're not talking about a chef who is opening up, like, uh, like Rick Bayless, who's, you know, making millions of dollars mm-hmm. off of selling Mexican salsas and positioning himself as the king of Mexican food. Mm-hmm. You're talking about a dining hall chef at a university who's probably making $13 an hour yeah. just trying to make the best food he can. Yeah. And when I was in college, uh, they made a pad thai with spaghetti and ketchup. Okay. Right? Certainly not the best pad thai <laughs> you've ever had on account sure, of yeah. had spaghetti and ketchup. Yeah. Um, and But the ketchup was meant to like mimic the tamarind paste that would be used in pad thai, right? Valid. And obviously Valid. they didn't have the thick rice noodles, so like they did spaghetti. And it was better than just eating spaghetti dumped with red sauce on it every single night at a dining hall because, you know, the chef's working on a budget. And so for me, it's not always going to be perfect. Yeah. But, like, I really respect people who try and don't do it from, like, a crappy place. They don't do it from a place of, like, I'm trying to exploit I'm trying to this like, culture for yeah, my yeah, own yeah, game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to feed I agree. people good food, man. Yeah, I think I think college – I've seen a lot of pictures of, like, mm. college dining halls and, like, this isn't sushi or, like, this yeah, isn't yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, and it's a, I, I do believe that they're not trying to, like, troll people in colleges. Yeah. I think they're just trying to do the best that they can. And instead of, like, a food show, like, we're trying to troll people. <laughs> but um but yeah i just think it's so interesting how everybody has a noodle that they love like for example we use something called reshte which is a wheat noodle in in something called ashresh which is a fa- very famous stew the mm-hmm. thought of using angel hair or fettuccine in mm-hmm. that makes my blood boil though oh fair yeah i wouldn't do it i just wouldn't even make the soup at that point you know yeah. what i mean like i just wouldn't even do it 
But like I, I, I Resh has like that thick noodle, right? Like that has like thick, a substantial chew yeah, it's to like it. A yeah, thick weedy noodle. Mm. I just couldn't imagine like subbing it out like so classically. Oh, yeah. But in some cases, I think you can sub it out. Yeah, like um, yeah. there are like if you were to use spaghetti to make chow mein, right? It's not the worst thing in the world, is it? No, but and when you're looking at the like uh, you know, mian versus spaghetti, like yeah. the difference in ingredients is truly, truly. A little bit of alkaline solution. Yeah. It's not going to be the best chow mein you've ever had. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that said, if you don't know where to buy those noodles and you don't want to make them from scratch, obviously, yeah. and you're trying to introduce your family, say, to a different yeah. food that you've never made before. That's right. Use spaghetti. It's very, very close. You know what I mean? So many mommy blogs have like spaghetti in place of chow mein. And honestly, it works. And it spaghetti's works. cheap as hell because we produce so much of it and it's traveled the world. And you see spaghetti has ended up in different cultures, right? You yeah. go to Dominican Republic, they eat a spaghetti that they'll put mm-hmm. olives in and it's a big beach food for some Yum. reason. Yeah, spaghetti on the beach. <laughs> you go to Japan even, you have spaghetti napolitan. Sure, yeah. Right, um, Philippines, spaghetti with banana ketchup sauce, mm, which is beautiful. That's right. And so like you get all this, to me, pasta noodles are the biggest cross-cultural food pollinator. You're right. And literally because it evolved in at least two separate instances thousands of years ago, yeah. thousands of miles apart, could have also uh, been perpetuated by the Arab world as well. Highly possible. By the Persian Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what's up. But <laughs> point is, it's like literally the one unifying food, I think, across all cultures. And I think it's beautiful. Whether we call it pasta, whether we call it noodles, Yeah. I think it's just use whatever word that more people can actually understand. It's so, it's just a good base. It's the best mm. base around. It's like a tortilla. Yeah. Noodles, tortillas, breads, all in the same family. Carbs. Carbs, carbs. are the secret unifier of the world. We would have world peace if more people ate carbs. I, Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> you got to start eating carbs again. Does she not eat carbs? Uh, yeah, she eats like paleo. I just watched the thing. She eats paleo, which is no, there's still carbs in it, but it's like, mm. you can eat like potatoes, but you can't eat grains because they're oh, like paleolithic because culti- they, they were cultivated by like human, like agriculture. Yeah. But oh. also like wild wheat surely existed and people were grinding it up. <laughs> I don't know. None of this makes sense. Carb. It's, it's funny when people are like, I yeah. love carbs. It's like, yeah, you know who else loves carbs? Every freaking human being on Thousands earth. Thousands of years of human yeah. history. Eat more carbs. This is the point of the podcast. Eat more carbs. Eat, more eat carbs, noodles. Eat noodles. Eat pasta. And eat them with people you like. Even with people you don't like. Maybe you'll like them after you have some pasta with them. Did we learn anything? Is there any insummation we can even take away here? I think you just are very passionate about it. And I loved learning from you today. I really absorbed like 70% of the conversation. And you were great. I learned a lot from you. Thank you for being such a good teacher. I'm sorry I mansplained noodles at no, you. No, you didn't mansplain. I, I learned a lot. I mean, I, I do look, I, I mean, I know what noodles and pasta are, but I think you really dive deep. And personally, I just appreciated it. I'm. I will say that I think all long things is noodles, including <laughs> pool noodles, and that is the noodle that we didn't touch on, Nicole. The pool history oh of pool God. noodles is. Uh, all right, Nicole. <laughs> We've heard what you. All right. Hey. All right, Josh, Nicole. You were so close to the microphone. Well, I don't think I'm that close to the microphone, Nicole. Now we're you and I have to say. You're literally <laughs> oh, no, kissing right the microphone. Where no, 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 we go? Opinion, I got <laughs> All right, P headphone users. <laughs> I feel like uh, I could announce horse racing. Can you just... Go to Sea Biscuit 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> That's the name of the horse. Sea Biscuit 2 Electric Boogaloo. Can you Sorry. sit back a I'm little bit fine. and do that again? Fine. Opinions are like casseroles. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole. My name's Allie and my fiance, Harrison, hey, and I listen to your show a lot. And I was just sitting here eating his mom's seafood chowder out of a bread bowl. And I thought, I'm sorry, <laughs> is a soup in a bread bowl a sandwich? Wait, I what don't kind think of chowder? So, but I would chowder. love to hear you debate it. And if Harrison's listening, hi, Harrison. Love hey, you. Hey, hi, Harrison. Harrison. Love you too, I love buddy. You. Um, anyways, <laughs> soup in a bread bowl, a sandwich. Of course it's not. It's a dumpling. It's delicious, is what it is. It's a soup dumpling. It's just, it's, it's a uh, soup dumpling, but reverse. But reverse. No. No, it's a soup. It's, it's, a, it's soup a soup dumpling. dumpling. It's a soup dumpling. Yeah, it's well, a soup dumpling. It's a soup pie. Oh, that's what it is. Mm, a soup pie. It's a soup. It's it's a large format soup dumpling. One to be shared. Well, I think a dumpling has to be cooked 
inside of the we rapper. We already talked about this, and I don't think so. Mm. Can I get a divorce from Nicole? How do you get a podcast divorce? We're not married. Divorce? We're not married. We're not get, married. Yeah, well, whatever. You're getting um, married. I, I think am soup married. Pie. I think soup pie. It's a crust that's filled with things. For me, it's a soup dumpling. No, because pies are also baked. I like to. I will say something. I will say one thing. <laughs> I like to get a very starchy, thick soup, fill a bread bowl, let it come to room temp so it thickens, and then I can eat it like a sandwich. And that's the real message. (laughs) If you put some gelatin in it, I'd be D. Nah, man, I'm I'm D D for that S. (laughs) Hi, Josh and Nicole. This is Sam from Santa Cruz. I'm calling you with an angry opinion. Uh Uh-oh. And that opinion is... Uh Uh-oh. They should stop making the new kind of chips and crackers. What's that? They're not going to make anything better than a wheat and an arit oh. in the cracker section. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And they're not going to make anything better than tortilla chips in the chip section. I don't oh. want anything made out of I love some sort this. of quinoa crunch or some red lentil snap. They're not like they're less carbs or more protein or whatever. And they He's sure correct. don't taste correct. better. He's correct. So what's the point? Let him cook. To take advantage of suburban moms who are yes. trying to be healthy by exactly. eating soy exactly. burgers instead of lean ground beef. Exactly. It's ridiculous. It's a waste of time. Thank I, you. What this man is proposing is a sort of uh, post history. It's beautiful. The idea that we've we've the idea that um, people have that liberal democracy and it's very controversial. Idea, liberal democracy is the end all be all of governance systems and this is the most it will ever be so anything you know that comes afterwards it is just a regression we're post history okay i don't agree with that statement Um, but this man agrees with that but with chips (laughs) and crackers there's no more innovation and crackers no i think there's innovation what's the best chip what's the best chip or cracker innovation in the last my favorite is raincoat crisps the hell is a raincoat crisp? Never, well, go, you Google it, baby. What do you mean Google it? This is, I can't tell me what I'm it is. I'm just upset you said you wanted to get a divorce from me. We're not even I'm married. I'm sorry. Why would you ever divorce me? Raincoat crisp? Yeah, they're Rain delicious. Raincoast. Raincoast. Oh, I've been saying it wrong for seven years. <laughs> what else is new? I pronounce words wrong sometimes. Oh, no. They're the, the crackers. Heart. They put the cranberries in it and stuff. Yeah, they like put that. the things like in the crackers. I've had that. There's like figs in it. No, give yeah. me a good cracker. Those are worse. That's a regression. What? No, it's not. It's that, not. It's You asked me my opinion. Opinion. I know, and I'm telling you that that's my opinion is wrong. Oh my god, they're so oh they're so bad. They're so hard too. They're so hard. They're the best. Have you ever had a piece of cheese with that? Yeah, it obstructs the cheese. Oh my god, that. no, it uh, doesn't. You obstruct me from living my life, Josh. You want to talk about obstruction? I'm not taking the raincoat crisps as you call them out I your hands. I can't believe you want to get a friend you know? divorce. This is the meanest thing you've ever said to me. And you said some mean thing. <laughs> You know veggie straws? Speaking of taking taking advantage of suburban white moms, <laughs> veggie straws, you know what the veggie they're made out of is? A corn? Potato. <laughs> it's a potato chip. Look up the actual ingredients. They're I like colored green. Those. There might be a little bit of spinach, a little bit of tomato. The veggie in it is a potato. There's it's like no, calling Lay's vegetable chips. It's nothing bad. Nothing. You know what's the best cracker? Uh, a club cracker. <laughs> <laughs> I love club crackers. There's no cracker better than a club cracker, but I do like rain coast. Is that how you yeah. say it? Rain coast crisps or crisps? <laughs> I think I think crackers peaked with uh, with um, transubstantiation. Why are you using big words in this podcast to piss me off? It's when Jesus turned the flesh of his body into communion wafers. Well, communion wafers are the best. They're so good. I've never had one. I don't before. know. If, I don't think I'm allowed to eat them. I'm not allowed to eat them. Yeah. I accidentally ate one at a Catholic wedding. I didn't accidentally know what I was to. on purpose. I was in the bathroom when they explained the rules, and I came back and I saw everyone lining up for crackers, and I ate one, and it was good. And now I have the hunger for it, but I don't know if I'm allowed to eat them. <laughs> also, like, the Pope officially ruled that gluten-free communion wafers are not indeed the body of Jesus. This is That's crazy. a real thing that happened. Why are they so white? I don't know. They're just like, because... They, they cause, look like styrofoam. Because <laughs> they believe Jesus was white? I don't know. They're such white cookie, like <laughs> crackers. <laughs> They're such white little discs. It's crazy to me. They're white, like stark white. Animal crackers. Science <laughs> peaked with animal crackers. And that's where we all end up. I don't, Animal think, crackers are cookies. I'm trying to think of a chip innovation that I've like enjoyed over the last 10 Talkies. years. Takis. Takis have been around for a long time in Mexico. We just um, kind of like 3D. imported them. 3D. 3D. Doritos 3D, like bugles. I, mean, I like bugles. They're fine. I wouldn't call that like an innovation. But like all these newfangled ones with the lentil crisps. Popcorners. Popcorners. Oh, I hate popcorners. Love popcorn. Ew, Kettle corn ew. flavored popcorners. Ew. That's a chip innovation. Keep those in my house. Disgusting. And they are less carbs and less <laughs> calories than a Dorito. I like the lentil. It's the only one. 
I like the ones that have like the lentils and like, oh, taro chips are my favorite though. Taro chips are good. You get yeah. the taro. They're fun. They make you feel good. They're beautiful. There's I a like brand to of chips called uh, Food Should Taste Good or something like that. It's like, it's a really annoying brand, but they have like sweet potato tortilla I'm into chips it. that were nice. I'm into the chip innovation centers. Yeah, I keep it going. I love the energy though, dude. Love the energy. Yeah, same. Hi, I'm Veronica from PA. Hi, Veronica. And personally, I think mustard is not as bad as everybody says it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely eat a spoonful of it. But, I mean, it's my opinion. You can get mad at me if you want. No, hey, stop. Bye. Stop. Yeah, okay. you're you're making up uh, false situations in your head that we're. I'm not get mad, mad at, at you. you. I understand you because I used to be a a like really staunch mustard hater. I didn't until, know that until my taste buds change because taste buds change. Yeah, you and hit now, puberty and your taste buds change. No. Wow. They That's change every seven years or something. So they start growing hair on my tongue. You have a hairy tongue. <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't ask questions. I just shave. You have morning. hair on your tongue, and that well, when I hit puberty, I they said you grow hair in places you didn't <laughs> expect, and then there was a place that I expected, and a place I didn't expect, and the tongue. Was oh my gosh! What it's color cool, is the hair? What? What color is the hair? Are you asking if the carpet <laughs> match? Um, <laughs> um, I'm no, sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I uh, love. I, I like mustard now. I used to not like mustard, but now I do because I, I appreciate the flavor and the tang, mm-hmm. and it adds a lot of dimension to foods. I think yellow mustard, like American yellow mustard, is like a very abstract. Not bad. I still love mm-hmm. it, especially on a hot dog. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, makes me want a hot dog real, real bad. bad. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, there's Gosh. a lot of other mustards out there that like actually accentuate flavors more. I've been been using a lot of that Zatarain's Creole mustard. You look like the Fourth of July. <laughs> I think it's really good, but there's yeah. a saying you don't like mustard is like saying you don't like hot sauces. There's so many different varieties yeah, it's not from so true. many different parts of the world. Yeah. You know, it's strong horseradishy Dijon. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Mm-hmm. A little honey mussy. I love all mustards now. Bussin' on that honey mussin', it's great. It's delightful. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Trevor Bussin said it. on that honey mussy? Trevor said it. I don't know what Trevor's it means. never said that sentence before in his uh, life. Don't that's where justify I got it, from. it. That's where I got it from. Don't justify your bad behavior. I can't believe you want a front divorce. <laughs> Irreconcilable. <laughs> Nicole and Josh love the show. Everything about it. Just wanted to share my way to elevate goldfish. <laughs> Add Valentina hot sauce. To goldfish? Try it. Ooh, I can see that. I understand that. I like that. I'm into that. You know what? I mean, you just pour it in the bag. You go shake, 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 shake. Then you eat it and your fingers get a little bit stringy. And it just lies on down and you do it again tomorrow. <laughs> You know what my favorite thing is about Valentina hot sauce is how, how big the is? bottles oh. are. What do you say, sticky or stinky? Sticky. It's sticky? like it's kind of like xanthan gummy. Like yeah. the way that it drips out. Like got a thickness. It, it, it like... got a thickness to it. I like that thickness of the Valentina hot sauce. Valentina is thick. No, it glugs out of the, what I was. It glugs out of the bottle because I'm used to you go to like a, like a marisco truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if people know this, but all the best shrimp in LA comes out of trucks. Yes, that's yeah, yeah. true. You go to the marisco trucks. You got to get there before noon on like a Saturday, and it's great. But yeah. they'll have like a giant thing of Valentina hot giant, sauce. Yeah, and it, you just glug it the on thing, your food. The thing I don't like about it is that it's so big mm-hmm. and it's glass, and it might slip and fall. It is glass and that's too. my problem. I love that. I have a mini. I, I have a regular size Valentina that I get from the night. Nine cents store like all the time, mm-hmm. and I always use. It. I love the texture of it. It's so gloopy. Yeah, ugh. Valentina's great. It's got that tapatio, like a lot of that dehydrated uh-huh. chili in there. Not Ooh. much sweetness. Yeah, and also a big fan of soaking chips or crackers always. in things. Always, not always. garnishing, but soaking. Always, always. Big soaking. I guy. love soaking. Google Urban Dictionary soaking I'm and how much you love it. Soaking it, it with hot. I was into soaking before. It was cool. Soaking's not cool. It's always cool. Soaking is timeless. It's like a diamond. Hey, hot dog is a sandwich. I love your podcast. That was a really intense voicemail to listen to. That's right. Um, but I love it. Right. My controversial right. food opinion is that dates, diced, pretty small, belong in tuna salad. The little bit of sweet mixed with a little bit of salty Whoa. is the perfect balance. And people think that I'm super <laughs> weird for that, Whoa. but it's the best way to eat tuna salad. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Where Thanks. are we in Tunis, the capital <laughs> of Tunisia? Tunisia? Where are we right now? Are we, in, are we in Moorish Spain? Are we in Granada at the Alhambra? Where are we, Nicole? Are you feeling this right now? Yeah, my eyes are closed and I'm feeling Ooh, it. The warmth, the salt Ooh. spray, the Mediterranean. We don't know if we're in Tripoli right now. We don't know if we're in the Aegean, Ooh. the Adriatic. We don't know what's going on, but we know we're eating dried fruit and our I preserved fish salad. We're loving it, baby. Dried. 
I put oh, sometimes yeah, I put, tell me what you do. I'm tell sorry, I opened my eyes. I need to pretend. No, okay. tell me about the tuna sometimes, salad. Sometimes I like to put like craisins, so Ooh, this makes yeah, like total craisins. sense. Craisins, but man, yeah. um, uh, yeah, but like it depends on the date. You can't. You gotta use the. Is it neglet? Is that the one that I like? Deglet, 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 mates. deglet. Yeah, I not like, the medjool. We're talking <laughs> deglet. No, you right can't here. put firmer medjool. If too. you put the medjool, it, it just disintegrate and it'll turn yeah, into the same mush. texture as tuna. You need. Are we still moving our body? Yeah, I'm moving around with the deglet dates. You need. You need to just use Talk a deglet. To Talk to me about it, Nicole. You need to use a deglet. Yeah, I'm using that deglet. <laughs> Is this us becoming friends again? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm back. I don't want to okay. divorce anymore. I'm getting worked up about this tuna salad with the deglet dates. I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to take those dates. I'm going to dice them up. I'm going to put a little bit of red wine vinegar on them. Oh. Pop them in the microwave for 30 seconds. I'll hydrate the dates. I it almost makes like a pickle. I do this with my with my dried raisins. Mm-hmm. I do dried raisins, <laughs> just raisins. No, nah, but then you wet them. You wet the dried raisins to turn them back into grapes. Rehydrated raisins. Yeah. Hydrated raisins. How do you juice a prune? You don't. You dehydrate a plum. You call it a prune. Now you're where are you getting the juice from? You dehydrated it. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> How do you make prune juice? You guys ever eaten a prune? How are you juicing it? Prune juice? Well, you you blend it. That's not juice. That's a prune smoothie. <laughs> you you know, blend like, it and you strain it. It's not juice. Oh, it, it what are can you talking be. About? It can be. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> can we do a whole podcast about prune juice? Just about what is juice? No, but no. <laughs> what is what is why is prune juice? And then we can we can just drink what like mean, sixteen is, cans of prune what do you juice. Mean, why is We're not going to talk. Juice? We're just going to drink prune juice throughout the entire thing. I like prune juice. It's going to completely avoid us later, and it's going to be great. I'm into prune juice. I'm going to feel so skinny. What does this have to do with dates? <laughs> dates and prunes are the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> They're in the same family. It's like noodles and pasta. <laughs> hey, we should record a podcast on noodles and pasta. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we just... Do we have more opinions, Maggie? I think I I'd feel... like, I'd rather have dates and chicken salad. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. You know? Cra- like, craisins and tuna, maybe. I like craisins. I mean, dates and tuna make sense a little bit. You know, nobody knows where the term cranberry comes from. <laughs> no. I don't know if that's true. I just, <laughs> I just said it. I just said it again. <laughs> I think, no, there's something in this linguistics re- that they call like the cran. This is recorded and then, for people to listen to. I know. To. It's upsetting how little of an expert we are in so many I things. I think you're so funny, Josh. Someone Google this, though. It's something about, it's called like the cran. They use the term like phoneme or some linguistics term. Phoneme? Look up, look up cranberry etymology. Megan, we're, we're going to go down this rabbit hole. What else, <laughs> you listening at home, what else are you doing right now? Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. You know, okay. There's yeah. There's there's uh you know indigenous names. Cranberry. For it. No, it's not true. That's not true. Cran- yeah, cranberry. <laughs> is your phone? Is your uh, laptop? Oh, yeah, someone's slacking me, but that's fine. Um, okay. Oh, it's, it's this is a fun podcast. Cran- I'm having a great funny. time. Nicole, enter- to entertain them. I learned so much about Josh talking about pasta and noodles, and I'm learning about cranberries. What else will I learn today? Who knows? What's the most interesting thing I ever told you? Today, today, yeah. The most interesting thing you told me is uh, that Marco Polo's myth was not true. I thought that was really interesting. That's great. Okay, so in linguistic morphology, a cranberry morpheme, also called unique morpheme or fossilized term, is a type of bound morpheme that cannot be assigned an independent meaning and grammatical function, but nonetheless serves to distinguish one word from another. So you look at something like a blackberry. That's a berry that looks vaguely black, right? Okay. Blueberry, blueberry, berry that's kind of blue. Nobody knows where cran actually comes from. Like the word cran. Yeah. It so like what does cran mis- even mean? It might just be a misinterpretation of another word. Well, so the term cran, they think, has just gone extinct. They used to use it for something. Oh. And it's just gone extinct, but we still know it because okay. it's if it's only existing in the term cranberry. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Stumpire. Are we done? No, I had one so more, much fun. I want penny, one more. more. I want Maggie, one more, please. I'm sorry I wasted all of your time on the cranberry morpheme. Lukewarm is another one. Oh, wow. That uh, voicemail. <laughs> anyway, hi, Josh and Nicole. My name is worked up. Big fan of the show. Um, and my opinion is that people rag on Arby's way too much. Rag on In the it? fast food game, their fries mm. are undefeated. Better Agreed. than McDonald's, even. I'm sorry no, to say. not better than McDonald's. Instead, people need to be dogging more on Burger King. Everything about oh, Burger King yeah. is just straight up mid. All of their patties taste like right. shoe leather. Their nuggets <gasps> yeah. are barely even nuggets, and their fries are awful. 
Mm. I thank you. Mm. That is my opinion. Bye. You are welcome. That was so impassioned. I love that. Um, let me tell you about Arby's. My dad's favorite restaurant is Arby's. Mom and dad's first date was at Arby's. And um, David and I have spoken about this. Whenever he is uh, a father, his first meal will be at Arby's. That's very that with is my dad the and American his dad. Dream. With my dad and his dad, they're all going to have a little Arby's date. It's two generations. Isn't of that cute? Persian Americans <laughs> eating at Arby's in Los Angeles, like, and there's only like one Arby's. There's in only LA. one on Sunset, and it is. It's good. It's awful. Well, the food's fine. The the <laughs> manager there chased us out of the parking lot once. The manager. We weren't and I even are like friends. filming. My nope. I'll tell you a story. My dad was in the hospital. He had stomach issues because he loves Arby's. And then he says, "Can you get me Arby's?" And I said, "Sure." So I go and I tell the guy. I'm like, "Oh yeah, my dad." I, I talk to the manager. I'm like, "You know, my dad's in the hospital, and he gave me a free cookie." He called the police on us. <laughs> well, he gave me a free cookie. Fine, calling the police on us doesn't <laughs> negate your free cookie, and your free cookie does not negate the. And my dad ate his on. Arby's, and he was so. Happy. <laughs> I love Arby's. <laughs> their their meat tastes like paper that you've soaked in beef broth. I'm and I into love it. it. I'm into it. Their their food is good. Like genuinely, the onion bun with the cheddar sauce. You put a little bit of that horseradish mayonnaise. Like an Arby's beef and cheddar sandwich is one of my yeah. favorite fast food. Have items. you had the hito before? The what? The hito? The y- gyro? Giro? Y- Euro? Euro. I yeah. said hito, right? Hero. It's it's hero. Yeah, hero. 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 Hero Ono. The, I, uh, did you Hero have Dreams the, of Sushi. Did you have the gyro from Arby's? Yeah, I love it. It's great. It's okay. <laughs> Perfectly defined. Whatever. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. The friendship's bad. I don't like that. It's just, friendship you know, is, you just got to get a beef and cheddar. And the curly fries are, are curly fry. the, best fry, the best fast food fries in the game. And an onion ring. If you ring. like curly fries. And then a Coke. They got those little, they still got those potato patties with the, the jalapeno and the cheese in them. I don't know, but what I, like I do potato love, patties. My, my parents' house is filled to the brim. You know how you have like a condiment drawer? Yeah. Uh-huh. Horsey sauce and Arby sauce. Just tons of it. Arby sauce is so close to just pure corn oh, syrup. It's crazy. Um, I don't even love Arby sauce and things. I put a ton of horsey sauce horsey on it. Horsey sauce is good. Arby's discontinuing the potato cakes. Josh, Fine, I'm rag sorry. on Arby's. Rag on Arby's I'm all you sorry. want. Sorry. Uh, Burger King, I don't know. I enjoy Burger King. The original chicken least, sandwich? It's my least favorite fast food. Nicole, they got a joint. chicken sandwich, but it's long. What don't you understand? I understand the humor of that, but I'm not there to <laughs> eat for jokes. <laughs> I get it. I do agree, though, that Arby's, people need to stop ragging on Arby's. Yeah, I think it was Arby's... all Bill Oakley's fault. It was the Simpsons episode. Oh, uh, the twins? The twins reference. Like, yeah, like, I'd rather eat an Arby's. Arby's. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I blame him. Thanks a lot, Bill Oakley. Thanks, Bill. I don't know if you wrote that joke, but I just imagine you did with the Arby's reference. Uh, anywho, on that note. Oh, God. Hold on. Let me set up for the outro, Nicole. <coughs> Thank you for listening to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We got new audio-only episodes every Wednesday. <laughs> and then a video version every Friday. <laughs> On what my happened? Teeth. What is going on with you? I almost choked on my tea. <laughs> you never drank tea before? <laughs> Nicole, is that a chai tea? <laughs> I'll read Nicole's part. If you want to be featured on Infinity Like Casseroles, give us a ring and leave a quick message at 833-DOGPOD1. That's not what I sound like. Yeah, you sound like Chris Kattan. Uh, for more Mythical Kitchen, check us out on YouTube, <laughs> where we launch new videos every week. We'll see you next time. Nicole, give them the theme music. A hot dog is a sandwich, and you know it's true. <gasps> a hot dog is a sandwich, <laughs> and you know it's true. <laughs> hot dog is, a hot dog is, hot dog is a sandwich, and you know it. <laughs> hit, hit him with the baritone. Nicole, hit him with the, <laughs> hit him with the baritone. <laughs> there it is.